Okay, here's a quick um, whiteboard of knowledge um, lesson. Well, I guess I can't say lesson since uh, I'm not even 100% sure that I know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I just need to talk this out so that it refreshes myself as well in terms of what I know. And uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong and whatnot. Uh, so if you have a math sensor that, or if you have a vehicle that you constantly seem to be having math sensor issues with and just replacing a math sensor solves the problem. Um, two things that could be going on here. Yes, that the math sensors could be failing because there are cheap parts and uh, or they get contaminated or whatever. Uh, and or, uh, well yeah, no, I guess it is a faulty part or there, there is an underlying issue that you, you're somehow um, solving temporarily by disconnecting and reconnecting a MAF sensor. So you think a MAF sensor is solving it, but it could actually just be as simple as some wiring issue. Um, um, by simple, relatively speaking, obviously, because it can be a pain in the, in the ass sometimes to find wiring problems. But anyways, the way the system works, uh, you've got the MAF, sorry, MAF. Did I say MAF earlier? I meant MAF. MAF sensor and you've got throttle position. Uh, the ECM knows how much uh, engine size, let's say 2.0. The ECM knows how much volume the engine takes up in terms of airspace and it knows that according to X amount of throttle position, um, because the throttle opens, it restricts airflow, it knows at X amount of throttle position we forgot RPM, sorry, RPM. So at X amount of throttle position and X amount of RPM, the MAF sensor is supposed to put out X amount of uh, voltage or signal. So when driving, because your driving obviously varies, so whatever your throttle position is in here, be it high, low, and your RPM, depending on RPM. You can have high RPM and, s and low throttle position. You can have low RPM and high throttle position. And with those uh, values or under those conditions, or the ECM takes those conditions and uh, it monitors how much air the MAF is drawing in. If at X amount of throttle and X amount of RPM, according to X amount of size of the engine, the MAF signal is either above or too far below what the ECM is expecting, you're going to get a MAF sensor code. Uh, so if you have a vacuum leak uh, that's big enough, it'll, especially if it is uh, in front of the throttle, it'll suck more air um, into the engine that's not metered in the MAF, uh, if, if you understand what I'm saying. So if you have the engines here, there's a throttle plate, here's the MAF sensor, and here's a hose. If there's a leak here um, and the throttle is open X amount, the engine is still going to draw in X amount of air because it's restricted to the size of the engine and the amount of throttle position. But the volume of air that goes through the MAF sensor is not what's going into the engine uh, because it's sucking it after the MAF sensor uh, because air is going in this way and it's going through the MAF sensor but not all of the air is going through the MAF so the MAF is not able to read all of the air uh, and that's what can set a code. In a turbocharged vehicle if you have a boost leak um, so the, the turbo and air whatever and you have a boost leak that's leaking out, uh, you actually have more air being drawn through the MAF sensor because there's no restriction to boost. Um, so at X amount of RPM, because you've got all this air leaking, that air has to come from somewhere, so more air is rushing through the MAF sensor. Um, it may not necessarily set a boost leak code, but it definitely will set a MAF sensor code because it's an implausible signal. You're drawing, let's say, instead of a thousand or 100 grams a second, uh, you're now drawing in 120. Um, 
because you've got a leak here that you have to compensate for um, the, the even though the throttle is at X position it'll still allow that air to go through especially on the turbocharged engine because you've got more sucking capability so more air will go through the MAF at X amount of RPM and that'll set a MAF sensor code so you can have a boost leak that sets a MAF sensor code so don't be re replacing a MAF sensor uh, you can have a vacuum leak uh, ahead of the throttle, after the throttle, it all affects the MAF sensor. Um, so my, what I like to do is I like to disconnect the MAF sensor just for a quick uh, indication in terms of what changes or if anything changes during a test drive. So if I get into a vehicle and it runs crappy, I disconnect the MAF sensor. If it runs better, everything after the MAF, in my opinion, should be relatively good. If you still had a huge vacuum leak that the uh, engine had problems um, to deal with in terms of fuel trim, etc., there's no way it's going to compensate for that vacuum leak um, well enough for the engine to run good, in my opinion, with the MAF disconnected. So if the engine runs better with the MAF disconnected, um, it only tells you that the engine is in relatively good shape in terms of vacuum leaks, uh, everything else that the computer uses to calculate um, the, the, the required load that the engine is under. Um, so don't just replace a MAF if you get a MAF sensor code. Um, do some checking, okay? Look at the fuel trim values, disconnect the MAF, see how it runs with it disconnected because the engine defaults to a pre-programmed. Remember, it has all these maps in, in its memory. And uh, if it defaults to X amount of throttle uh, with X amount of RPM, it gets X amount of fuel. If the engine still had an underlying problem, it would run crappy with the MAF sensor disconnected. So if it runs good with the MAF sensor disconnected, then um, but it runs crappy with it connected, it's basically overriding the fuel map parameter because it's taking into account what the MAF is reading or putting out, if that makes sense. Um, I'm trying to find an analogy here that might work uh, in place of automotive uh, tech talk. No, I don't know when. It, anyways, maybe in the comments somebody else can uh, can let me know what their opinion is uh, but I'm just trying to say that the, the reason a car will run rough with a bad math is because the computer is taking is holding true what the math is is telling it uh, if the math is only putting out X amount of uh, signal the computer says well I'm only getting this amount of air so I'm only going to add this much of fuel and if that fuel doesn't match the air then you're going to get misfires, you're going to get stumbling, you're going to get hesitation, you may even get rough idle or no, a no start even, um, or even um, a no run, well, which is a no start, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, and uh, hopefully this video will continue with some um, voltage tests at the MAF sensor.